Hi, my name is Joseph Richberg, Senior Data Architect at Penguin Random House. On today's Azure Tutorials, we are going to discuss Azure Storage Events. Let's begin. Today we're going to talk about storage account events. Uh, events are used throughout the Azure ecosystem. I would hazard a guess that in the back end, everything is an event and they shuttle things back and forth, which is how you can have services connected so readily and why everything is instrumented in Azure. Uh, in Penguin Random House, we use two uh, services for events. We use the um, event grid domain to message between systems. And then we use the storage accounts to let every uh, other services know when they have events on themselves. So the purpose is, if you have a service in Azure that happens to provide native events, then use them. Use them as a way to manage and leverage the power of, of the cloud. So if you go to your portal uh, and you pick a storage account, on the left-hand side, once you've picked your storage account, you're going to come to an events. When you click on events, here is where you create subscriptions. So events in Azure are a publication subscription or a pub sub meaning an event is published. So some service registers an event. In this case, it's going to be the storage account is going to register an event and then say, I have notified, I've noticed something. An event has been triggered on my system. Is there any other system or service that wants to know about this event? Now, a single event can be subscribed to by multiple services. A subscription is a one-to-one -one when it comes to the service. So, someone drops a file. That's an event. I may have 10 different services that want to know when that file is dropped. That would require 10 subscriptions. So, a single event to multiple subscriptions. A subscription is tied to a specific service. A single logic app a single function. Uh, resources that are support storage account events. I'm not going to use any of the templates. Feel free to click and use a template and play around with it. What I'm going to show you how to do is create a subscription through the GUI here and then you can connect that to an existing service. So for me I had a lot of logic apps that were already created. We saw the I saw the events and I'm like, oh, I want to connect my logic apps to these events. And I think this is better. It gives you a, a better understanding. I, I have looked at some of the templates. And when you use the templates, they drop some uh, activities, especially in the logic apps, for you. And they're, they're, uh, a lot of them are drop boxes. And the issue is if you don't understand how the subscriptions work, then the selections in the drop boxes don't mean much. So once you understand how subscriptions work and how to create one, then the resources and the logic apps uh, make more sense. So let's go and create a subscription. Click on event subscription, the plus. So on the first tab, you have the name of the subscription. So since we're logic app heavy, we always, as a best practice, the name of the subscription is the name of the logic app. If you have functions or other resources, I recommend you do the same thing. It makes it easier to see what's connected to what. Then you have the event schema. So before I go into this, I need to explain that events aren't just, I guess, empty posts or pieces. They're actually JSON objects that contain quite a bit of information. And the information is relative to the event itself. So for storage events, they're gonna have information relating to the, the file or the directory. This includes stuff like the entire path of the file name. So it would be, the storage account, the container, the blob name, the file name, the folder names. It contains the size in bytes of the file. It contains the application type and a whole slew of other information. I'll link in the description below the web page which gives the detail about the event grid AP, or I'm sorry, the storage event JSON. The reason is that there are two types. So you have two types of storage accounts. You have the generic blob storage, and then you have the data lake storage, which is more for user interaction, among other things. What I like about the, the data lake is 
it has a uh, role based account or uh, role based access so we don't have to give keys out we have active directory and we tie it right to active directory depending upon which one which storage account you have it's going to determine the type of information that you get back and also how you interact with it which you'll see in a moment so we use the event grid schema which is microsoft's because we don't have an existing event system if you happen to have a homegrown event system and you had your own json objects you could use a custom schema and i believe the cloud event schema is an open source schema so if you have a third party that's doing your events and you want to bring it in-house you could potentially use this event schema so if you don't have anything and you're starting brand new event grid schema then there are event types now remember the storage account has access to a specific set of events it can listen on in this case it can only listen for six different events three for blob three for directories now all i care about are blobs created so i'll select blob created then there's the endpoint type so here is where you tie your subscription to your logic app your function another event grid etc so if you go here and you select this you'll see webhook so i select webhook now it asks for an endpoint so you click endpoint this endpoint is provided by the logic app so you go to your logic apps the trigger you want is when a http request is received and this trigger will give you this long custom http url when anything posts to this url it'll activate the logic app now in this case it's expecting a specific json as i described before it's expecting the json from an event grid from a storage event if something else is passed someone posts this or a, there's a an external application that tries to post to this the logic app will error because down here we have other things so remember it's tied specifically to it and that's why it's important to understand the json structure so you're going to copy this you're going to go back to your webhook or your selection and you're going to paste it here and you're going to go to confirm selection now your logic app must be enabled for this to work if you have a logic app you're working on and it's disabled and you hit confirm you'll get an error now the creation of the subscription doesn't actually fire the event it does some sort of check to see if it's a live event or I'm sorry a live logic app and it must be live so make sure your logic app is enabled confirm selection then you can disable it again it doesn't trigger it so you can do it anytime within your development cycle once you do that all you've done is say I want to fire this logic app when any blob was created in the storage account now most storage accounts have thousands of directories or thousands of containers possibly tens of thousands of directories and upwards of hundreds of thousands of files you want to be more specific so to become more granular you go over here to the filters section that provides this screen now how you determine the specific folder you want to look at is with this subject begins with now you're thinking subject what's the subject well remember it's a json object and there's actually a subject line so this is a, a neat way for you to put a filter on the subject which actually contains that file information so when you get that json object back in your logic app or your azure function the subject line contains the relevant information regarding the file now there are some pieces you can use that are always the default so blob forward slash blob services forward slash default forward slash containers is always the same then you put your specific container name then forward slash blobs is always the same then forward slash if you have subfolders under that container and it's folder one folder two always ending with a forward slash now if you want a specific file extension you can put .gpg, .txt, anything you want. And this will say find files that begin with and end with. That can be difficult at times if you mix and match. So as best practice for us, what we tend to do is we tend to have a folder specifically for our process. And then we do an ends with 
So if you put a test file, you can make sure the test file doesn't get picked up by the production system. Now, if I did something like this, it'll look for everything that has test underscore and anything after that, right? So we would do, you know, if I do data underscore, let's say there's one, two, three, four, five, that's the wildcard. Again, a lot of this is explained in that web page. And also it's explained, and the reason I'm putting the web page is this here, this data API. So data, dot a, data is also an object in the JSON, and dot .API is a specific key in the JSON. And so when you put a file, when you start loading a file up, if the file takes five minutes to load, the storage account is aware a file is being loaded. There's activity. But you don't want your logic app to trigger at that point. That would be disastrous. File takes five minutes to load. Your logic app triggers and says, I'm going to read the data. And the data is, not, is either corrupt, and unavailable, or partially pushed. So these three specific APIs or API values are only pushed in the event when the file is complete. So for instance, if I got rid of all these and I started putting a file up, there's a specific API, I think it's like in progress or something, that gets fired off saying, hey, I have a new file that's being pushed. If I cancel that, an event doesn't go out and saying that file is canceled. So I have an event that says a file has begun uploading. And then I have a, an event that says a file has finished uploading. So you want to make sure, based upon whether you have the V1 or V2 of your blob storage, which API you're looking at and which one you're coding for. And that's as far as I can go with this tutorial. As you can see, the Create button is grayed out because I didn't provide a proper endpoint. Remember, you need endpoints for it to validate before you can create a subscription. If you thought this was helpful, please like and subscribe, share the video with others. I'm going to be doing another video on our use of event grid domains. If there's another topic you'd like to see, please comment below, and I'll do my best to get to it. Thank you.